Hi there. Well, we're always looking for ways that we can enhance the risk-adjusted returns of the portfolios. And we say risk-adjusted because, of course, normally in the investment world, if you want to uh, aim for a higher level of return, then you need to accept probably an increased level of risk. Or to put it another way, if you can't stomach some risk, then you need to accept a fairly low return. Um, and the word risk means different things to different people. You know, often people think of risk meaning volatility, which is essentially how much does each, uh, how much do investments fluctuate on a sort of short-term basis. But we prefer to think of risk in terms of uncertainty. You know, what are the likelihood of getting particular outcomes, for example? And one of the ways we can try and increase that certainty within portfolios is using products like defined returns. So if you've not come across them before, essentially a defined returns product will pay a predetermined return in a given set of circumstances. So for example, we've recently set up a structured product, a defined returns product with UBS, the large investment bank. And this product will promise, uh, promises to pay us an 11.65% annual return if the FTSE 100 or the, and the S&P 500 are at the same level as they were at the starting point or higher. And that will be paid out at any one of the first six monthly anniversaries, if you like, over the first five years. So if, let's say, in a year's time, uh, markets have fluctuated, but in a year's time we get to the point where they're back above where we, were, where we were last week when the product was set up, the product would kick out on that day and we get the 11.65% gain plus we'd get our money back. Um, now that can happen, as I said, if at any one of the first six monthly anniversaries over the first five years. If we get to the end of the five years and the markets have never been higher, then we just simply get our money back. So there's an element of capital protection. Only if the markets are more than 40% down at that point would we start to potentially lose money. So for example, if the market was down 45%, we might lose 45%. So we like these returns because for these products for a number of reasons. So firstly, the headline return we think is attractive at 11.65% per annum. Uh, we think that's pretty good. Our best guess for what might happen over the, uh, over the next couple of years in the stock market is that returns might be a bit lower than that, maybe mid to high single digits. So if we were right, then that would be an attractive return. We've also increased the certainty of getting a decent return. The chance of getting a double digit return over the next couple of years is higher in a defined return in our view than investing directly in the stock market. And we can back test these products and we can see how frequently in, a, in the past we would have got our return at different stages. Doing that with this product, we found, found that actually in the past, 92% of the time would have got our return in the first two years. So that's pretty decent. Only 3.9% of the time would we have got to the end of the five years and just got our money back, not made any capital gain or loss. Um, no times in the past have we seen uh, a point where the markets were 40% down and therefore we'd lose money. Um, so we think the risks are fairly low, but there are risks inherent in the product, like with anything. So one of the biggest risks in these products is actually relative risk. So let's say the markets do really well, much better than we think, they go up 20%, well, we still only get 11.65, our gain is capped. Of course, we could be wrong in a different way and actually markets do a lot worse than we think. Well, these are linked to the market, so they will go down in price if that happens, but we do have that element of capital protection. We've got the full five years for the markets to bounce back, etc. So again, we think that risk is certainly worth living with. Now, the final risk is, of course, counterparty risk. So with the product I just used as an example, that's with UBS, we've essentially got a contract with them. Now, if UBS, for example, were to go bust, then we could lose actually all of the investment. We think that's pretty unlikely. We think if UBS did get into trouble, then the regulators would step in pretty promptly, like they did with Credit Suisse a couple of years ago. And if you actually had a Credit Suisse structured product, you'd have been absolutely fine. You'd have got your money back. Um, so that risk, we think, is relatively low, but it is there. It is real. And as a result, we therefore never put more than 5% with any one investment bank. We have a panel of investment banks and we go out to them and we try to choose those ones that give us the best rates. But also we look at the risk ratings of all those banks and try and only, secure, only choose ones we think are pretty secure. So when we look at the kind of the outlook at the moment, it's a bit uncertain. We've got the UK budget coming up. We've got lots of central bank uh, meetings where they might cut interest rates or they might not. 
we've got a US presidential election, all of these things could affect various different investment asset classes. So we think doing something like defined returns where we just slightly, just increase that level of certainty of a return is probably quite sensible in the current environment. So we'll continue to look at opportunities like that. We'll always hold some defined returns in the, pro in the portfolios. And at the moment, because of that uncertainty, we've got a little bit more than usual, close to 15% of a balanced portfolio, for example, and actually up to 20% of our global equity portfolio. And we think that's a sensible thing to do given the current outlook and the risks out there at the moment, because they still do provide, in our view, some pretty attractive returns. So I hope, hope you found that useful, and we'll see you again next time.